this was also a, a sort of a profound revelation as I, a curious person, as I mentioned, and it was just reading and trying to understand the anatomy of the human body and how things grow. If you look at a diagram of an adult human being, the bottom of their spinal cord um, ends well short of their intestines. It, it's inches away, maybe, maybe more, depending on the human. If you look at the anatomy of an infant or child, their spinal cord reaches all the way to the top uh, of their intestines. Uh, it, it, it sits directly behind their intestines. So as you grow from a child to a human, you, your body grows larger at a much higher rate than your spinal cord itself does in such a way that your spinal cord, the bottom of it ends up in a much different location for adults. So if in fact there is something going on with the combination of pesticide abuse and enteroviral health in your gut, the geographical proximity of your spinal cord to your intestines is such is different in such a way for children than it is for adults, that it would certainly make sense that the virus could make the hop, that as you described, very easily when your intestines, those things teeming with millions of enterovirus, the viruses rests directly against the spinal cord itself. In an adult, even with their gut integrity completely ruined by rampant pesticide ingestion, the distance from their intestines to their spinal cord is so great that it's not likely to ever make the hop. This is, again, I will stress my hypothesis. We know that pesticides affect the membrane health of uh, cellular membrane health. We know that it does strange things uh, other than, let's say, killing, you know, your microbiome, which is essentially normally in charge of protecting, you know, your, your body from the ravages of enteroviruses. But it also affects the, the cell membranes in such a way they become permeable. Now, there's not a lot of studies about this, but they did study DDT and realized these things were sort, starting to happen. So my hypothesis is, if I may just summarize it, pesticides called, ran, caused rampant problems during the lead arson era. They certainly caused rampant problems during the DDT era, which is polio as we know it from the 1940s to the mid-1950s. The real problem was the way in which they got, they wrecked the gut integrity of people's health and allowed what were normally innocuous enteroviruses to flourish and to migrate into the nervous system somehow. We don't know that, it, but it feels like the best solution I've been able to come up with. Yeah, it's a very parsimonious hypothesis and if i can just rephrase it so it's it's so crucial i want people to understand it maybe from two perspectives what you're arguing and there's a lot of interesting detail in the book for example there's a shift in the insect the targeted insect to one that eats fruit from one that eats leaves what was the second uh moth that was being oh. targeted in, in your book uh, gosh, I can't remember. I'm sorry. I can't remember either. But uh, in any case, there's a there's a move to an animal Codling that eats moth. fruit. Excuse me. Codling Codling moth. Moth. So because crops are now being directly targeted and you've got this new pesticide that's been formulated um, so that it doesn't wash off. Washing off is a problem because every time it rains, you have to reapply. So you, a pesticide that doesn't wash off is advantageous. And then it's being sprayed directly onto fruit because they're being attacked by the coddling moth. And then the point is, even if people are washing that fruit, which they will have done much less than they once would have because they would be used to eating fruit without washing it because there were no pesticides uh, on the fruit to begin with, you know, originally. So you've got people, even if they go to wash the pesticide off, the pesticide is resistant to being washed off because it's rain tolerant. So mm -hmm. they're ingesting large amounts of it on the fruit. Um, and you've got, so that it's, it's going to, you know, metals are not well tolerated by the body because our ancestors would not have had um, high exposures regularly enough for the body to learn that trick evolutionarily. 
So your hypothesis is it is damaging the gut's integrity that in infants and children, the proximity of the gut to the spine is uh, quite close, that that closeness, the breach in the intestines from the ingestion of pesticides is facilitating the migration of viruses that are fundamentally gut viruses that, do, mm -hmm. that are not highly virulent. Um, they are migrating through this path, not because they have any ecological reason to do so, but because the pathway is now open, migrating into tissue where they're demonstrated to have the capacity to uh, reproduce. In their reproductive cycle, once they've gotten into the spine, they are producing inflammation, poliomyelitis, um, and that this matches the pattern of polio. It's afflicting children. Um, it is afflicting the neurons that are in the front of the spine, closest physically to the gut, and sparing the neurons in the back of the spine, which is farther from the gut, mm -hmm. and sparing adults because the, uh, the spinal cord has moved physically away in the process of growth from the intestines. So even if the gut in an adult is damaged, the pathway for the enterovirus to make it into the neuronal tissue uh, is not available. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that is at the very least an elegant hypothesis to explain a highly complex phenomenon. It also has the attribute of explaining why addressing the enterovirus might have positive effects on uh, polio. Correct. The point is, to, the, if, if there were no virus in that story, if metals were simply uh, migrating from the gut into the spine and damaging tissue, then you would expect that no vaccine could possibly have any impact on that story. But because an enterovirus is finding its way into the uh, the spinal cord, vaccinating against that enterovirus will actually potentially have a positive effect. Yes. Um, but it's not the place where you would naturally intervene in this story. It's a very risky place to intervene in the story. And there's a much more obvious place to intervene, which is uh, at the level of not uh, using pesticides with this effect, having, you know, never putting them on anything anybody's ever going to eat. Uh, you know, protecting people from the metals would be the key way to do it. And I would, uh, so uh, how's that so far? Is that, is that a fair uh, summary? Uh, it's a beautiful rendition. I, I wish I could summarize as elegantly as you did.